classroom is a very different kind of thing than it was 10 years ago. It doesn't just exist for an hour and a half each week or three hours each week. The classroom exists constantly, day and night, online. Duke is a place that gets it. It understands the way modern technology infused with real substance can make a real difference for how education happens or how research happens. Students today have spent their whole life learning online. That's so much part of their everyday life, they're not aware that they're learning in a way different than their parents were. If for them, it's just learning. So how does the faculty member take advantage of that, but feed the necessary content into that so that the technology, again, does not take over, but becomes an enabler? Increasingly, what we're finding are uh, courses that are experimenting in the way the information is delivered outside of class, and then a change in dynamic of what's occurring in the classroom. The professor would pre-record a video for a topic that we're going to discuss and either ask us to watch it before class or watch it after class, whereas he does a more interactive approach to it in class. So you make the classroom the place where those questions get really engaged, and you get the fact-based material taught elsewhere four or five years ago, we started recording course lectures. So we've been working with Cisco to find ways to make that available We're using some of the Cisco technologies, Show and Share and their MXE product, so that we can automatically transcode and transcribe it. A student can search for a concept from that course and from other courses where it might have been covered or from prior semesters. The context within which younger people learn has been very much more driven by access to information. They've got richer source of access. And secondly is how they actually collaborate to make meaning together. So they actually leverage the technology in much more collaborative ways through platforms like Facebook or MySpace. When I saw Cisco Quad the first time, I was really excited because it addressed the issue of, well, why don't you just put a bunch of stuff in Facebook? It gave us something that vaguely like Facebook, but for behind the firewall. So we started experimenting with Quad as a collaboration space, and typically the class sessions start with show what you got done in the last assignment to the rest of the class. The same thing's happening in the online area with Quad, where it's put your stuff up where everybody else can see it, and we'll all discuss it jointly, and then next assignment comes out, and we work from there. That combination of async collaboration and an activity feed of who's doing what, plus some real-time interaction, has been a win. And so this notion of students contributing to the education of other students and learning from one another becomes a really powerful environment for us that these technologies can help to enable. What we're seeing now is using technology, particularly when it's in real time, that enables faculty and students to interact in much richer ways with much better learning outcomes. The telepresence classroom, as, as we've designed it, really promotes that interactivity even at a distance. Telepresence has the ability to make that one-to-one -one connection and to break down those barriers of one person describing information and then 150 people simply consuming it. Throwing a lot of tools into a classroom does nothing. I think we've really worked hard at thinking about what these tools allow us to do and how they allow us to help imagine the world of work and the world of constant learning that our students are entering when they leave Duke.